participants and also um, present some of the experiences uh, of the cooperative model doing the Aflatoon program, as well as uh, working around and brainstorming on some ideas on how we can work together. But before we start uh, anything, uh, I would like to inform you that, um, as you might all know, we have signed an agreement with the Cooperative Alliance, International Cooperative Alliance in Africa, and the International Cooperative Alliance in uh, Southeast, uh, in uh, sorry, in Asia Pacific. Um, but to 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 honor that, this is actually one of the first practical steps to. Um, to see how we can work together. But before I do any presentation, before I move on ahead, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Sifa as well to, uh, to, to say a few words uh, to kick off this meeting before I start my presentation. To you, Dr. Sifa. <clears throat> yeah, thank you very much, Hassan. Good morning, everyone. Good evening uh, or good afternoon, depending on where you are uh, currently. Uh, like we have had, my names are uh, Chioge Sifa. I'm the Regional Director for International Cooperative Alliance Africa. Um, I will double also uh, representing here, uh, uh, maybe speaking also on behalf of uh, Balu, who is my counterpart in Asia Pacific, uh, who could not join with us because uh, he's currently in uh, the US and uh, the time did not allow him to be with us uh, physically. But I've seen um, our colleagues from uh, um, the Asia Pacific regions are well represented and they might have some few words to say. Yeah, I will agree with you, Hassan, that uh, this is indeed uh, the very first step to, uh, um, to implement our MOU, which we did uh, sign uh, last year uh, in uh, Zimbabwe. That was around May. But before that, I'll, uh, please allow me to introduce to you um, our ICA family because uh, yes, um, and this would be more for the benefits of the Aflatoon uh, family. Um, the ICA Global is the worldwide umbrella for all the cooperatives uh, in the world and the custodian of the cooperative uh, principles and values. Uh, we do um, represent uh, more than um, one uh, more than one billion uh, uh, cooperators uh, worldwide, and um, the ICA Global is headquartered in uh, in Brussels. Uh, we do have uh, four regional uh, offices: the Africa ones, which is here, the headquartered in Nairobi; Asia Pacific headquartered in New Delhi; um, Americas headquartered in uh, in uh, Costa Rica; and the uh, COPS Europe headquartered in. Uh, in uh, Brussels as well. Um, for more uh, of the data, I think uh, you'll have time to maybe look at the, our website, which is uh, www.ica.cop. And for the, if you want to go specific on the, on the regions, there are links. Um, our regions, our, our websites are uh, also directly linked to the same. So. Because of time, I'll not go back. To, I'll not go uh, into more detail on that. But coming back to what um, Hassan had said, yes, we do have um, two signed MOUs within the ICA family with uh, Aflatoon International, and it was informed by the fact that we saw that um, Af Aflatoon International did complement uh, uh, our vision. So we 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 we, we, um, we did find that it had something. Uh, to offer and we had also something to offer to them. And uh, it's based on that, that we thought it was in the interest of our members to try and uh, work closely with uh, Aflatoon International. So far, um, we have not had per se the implementation of um, this uh, particular MOU and this will be the very first step. But having said that, we have had some um, uh, small activities with, uh, by the way of uh, uh, Aflatoon International. <coughs> In the case of uh, ICA Africa, Aflatoon International did make a presentation in our youth meeting, and which took place in uh, in Eswatini, uh, uh, the former Swaziland Kingdom of Swaziland, and it was a very interesting uh, presentation, by the way. So basically, uh, I might say that this will not be the very very first time that some of our man members uh, hear about uh, Aflatoon International and what they have been doing. 
but rather uh, uh, I could connect them to the session that we had in uh, Eswatin. Um, coming back to the topic of, 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 uh, of the day, which is um, 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 the introduction of social and the social and the financial education to our network that is both in Africa and Asia Pacific. Um, as much as um, the two topics resonate very well with what we actually do on a day-to-day -day basis, but I think uh, looking at it in a different angle and coming from, from a different uh, uh, quarter, um, and it does not matter um, at which level they will be pitching, I think there is great um, information and knowledge that we expect to learn and, and, and acquire at the end of this particular session. Um, Myself, like I said, at least I've been exposed a bit in Eswatini and I thought I did learn a, uh, a lot and that's why I do believe that even our members will be able to learn something. So this particular capacity also within our activities, calendar activities, does subscribe into um, the capacity building uh, activities under the EU project that is for both Africa and Asia Pacific and especially collaboration with other CSOs. So uh, that is uh, the activity line uh, in which this particular activity uh, does, uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, fit into. Um, without taking too much, I would like first to thank you for this opportunity and uh, for the Aflatoon uh, International uh, for volunteering and uh, making themselves available to uh, train our members on this uh, very important topic, especially during uh, the current times, which is uh, social and, and financial um, education. We, we do think that it will go a very long way. And uh, if we use our current lenses, which have, uh, uh, that, that is the COVID-19 crisis, we'll be able to look at what we thought we knew in a different uh, angle and be able to learn and uh, have an impact within our communities. So without uh, taking much of your time, I'd like to thank you once again and uh, to wish you well, um, to wish you fruitful discussions. Unfortunately, I have another meeting. Um, we have a board, board meeting today, so I will not be able to um, be with you throughout the, the session, but um, I think uh, my colleagues who are also in attendance and through the reports, I'll also be able to uh, get a glimpse of uh, what transpired. So thank you very much. Over to you, Hassan. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Sifa. And uh, very happy to see you, by the way. I mean, we, we always knew the, the name. We always saw the signatures, but it's the first time we saw the face. <laughs> At least for myself. <laughs> So very pleased to meet you, Dr. Sifa, and thank you again for your nice words. Uh, good luck with the board meetings. Uh, they tend to be pretty intense, so have a nice day. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, without further ado, I'll just go, uh, I'll just run again uh, on, on the agenda. I'm, go I'm going to share my screen about it so I can share it again and so you can see it. So uh, first we will go in this part actually where we'll uh, present a little bit the Aflatoon uh, history concepts, uh, what we are about, what is our program and how do we work as, as, as an organization. And then after that at 10.40 we will have a presentation of NATCO, uh, which is one of our oldest partner as well. And we can, we can comfortably say one of our most successful partners actually in the implementation of the Aflatoon program both in quality and scale. And after that, we will open uh, a session for questions and answers, uh, and we can, we, can, we, we can do that together. So please, if you have any uh, key question that you think uh, you need clarification about it, and you think that I missed clarifying more about it, don't hesitate to write it down on the chat box. And uh, when we reach the questions and answers uh, with Diana together, we will, uh, uh, select the main key questions and the guiding questions and try and answer those questions. So let me start with the um, Aflatoon uh, presentation first. I, I just want to make sure that, do you, do you all see the presentation, right? Do you all see my shared screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, that is perfect. Thank you, Moit. Um, so let me start a little bit from the beginning with the history of Aflatoon. Where does Aflatoon come from? 
Uh, actually, it started as a social program for uh, street children in India with an organization or an NGO called Meljol. And Meljol it basically means the name of a boy and a girl, Mel and Joel. Um, co correct, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Moit. Um, and that program no, basically aimed at uh, no, building no, certain no. capacities and building also uh, skills for these children so that they can uh, basically build certain resilience and also try and integrate society. Uh, but as they were building the social education, they have noticed that whenever they wanted to move ahead with a, uh, an initiative, a project, for example, or anything like that, they realized that they were lacking funds, that they were lacking uh, financial support. And that is why the idea of uh, saving came first, where they were encouraged basically to build some form of saving together and then work around those savings to build certain, uh, so, some of their activities. And that's how financial education has been introduced. And that's how we have seen uh, how financial education is key to social education. Um, so Meldrol, with that concept in mind, they built a curriculum and they built a program and then they tried to pilot it. Uh, so they run the program in India, they piloted it, they had some results and then they scaled it up a little bit. Uh, what happened is that one of the founders of the organization actually uh, moved away from India and moved to the Netherlands because she was married to a Dutch person and they moved to the Netherlands. So while moving to the Netherlands, she thought, why not bring the Afla to this social and financial education program to, 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 to the whole world? And that's how Afla to an international has been created. Um, some of you might wonder, what does Afla mean? Uh, actually, the word Aflatun in Arabic, in Urdu, in uh, Hindi, in Farsi, and in, in many uh, Middle Eastern and some uh, Western Asian languages, uh, it means the philosopher Plato, actually. It's a name. Uh, it's a calling name. for, And it also means the philosopher Plato. And some, you, you might know the, some, some of the writing of the philosopher Plato. Plato and the, the, the most famous one, of course, is the Republic, in which uh, basically he, 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 uh, he advocates for civism and he advocates for uh, civic engagement and he advocates for uh, civic action, basically. And we, think, we, we thought that that is a very good name to have for the organization. Where did the name come from? It has nothing to do with Plato. So actually when Meljol was developing their program, they wanted the program to be uh, child-centered, uh, participatory, but at the same time uh, to not differentiate between boys and girls. So they created a little character uh, which looks like a little flame and you might see it in few pictures. And they asked the children, what do you want to call this character? So the children came up with the name Aflatun. Uh, did it have anything to do with Plato? No, but actually at that time there was a very famous Bollywood movie called Aflatoon, in which the hero of the movie was protecting and fighting for the right of, uh, of, three, of three children, actually, in that, in, in that movie. And that's how the name came. Um, but now, before we start talking about the program, the concept, and everything, let me go uh, through certain rationales and certain issues that we are noticing uh, in, to, in, in the world today. Today, cert certain surveys and certain data shows that about 40% of children do not complete their basic education. So they enter the school, but they do they leave just before they finish their primary education. Now, even those who complete their education, 67% of them do not have the opportunity to benefit from financial literacy, do not have, do not have the opportunity to build uh, financial behavior. And all of those basically, when they graduate, for example, or when they complete their education, they also realize uh, both at the level of the young people, as well as at the level of the, of, 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 of the, the private sector or the employing sector, it can be also public sector, they all agree that they are not prepared for work. Basically, they agree that they lack certain behaviors that, that can contribute to, to, to their professional work, but they also lack certain skills. They can be entrepreneurial skills, they can be employable skills, they can be also social and life skills as we call them in, in general. 
So that is the main problematic that we have in, in the world nowadays. Um, and we also, uh, every year there is the OECD, there is the PISA as well that run certain surveys and certain, uh, uh, certain questions every year where they look at uh, the, 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 the status of uh, financial education. And actually they notice that the majority of the countries actually are below level one, where students are below level one, basically. And many of them do not complete the survey where basically they present them either with um, a bill, for instance, or an invoice, or a question about savings, or a question about interest. And they are not able to read through those documents. They are not able to provide a direct answer that, 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 uh, that, that, that was required. And that is a main issue because not having these skills and not being able to, to, to answer those questions can have repercussions in, in, in their life in the future. And even in their life as students or as children, because they will need at a certain stage to make certain decisions. They will need to, 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 to for example, negotiate mortgages let's say in the future they will need to negotiate prices if they want to buy anything like that they need to build savings in order to have a sort of a safety net or uh, prepare for for, for 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 their higher studies and so on so that is the situation uh, today and that is actually why at aflatoon we think that uh, it is very important uh, from a very early age to start with life skills and financial education and I'm going to introduce to you how Aflatoon basically think of these life skills and financial education. Uh, for, for the Aflatoon life skills, or sometimes we call it social education, social and financial education, uh, we think of it as a, uh, a, a ba basically a core of, uh, or, or a group of five core elements that we do not dissociate uh, from each other. So there is the personal understanding and exploration. Uh, where we invite children through debates, games, uh, talks, etc., to discover themselves, to discover their, uh, their, their, their talent, to discuss, or to, to discover what they are about and what they are capable of, but also build their own confidence, but also think that they are individuals, they are part of society, society has a role for them, but they also have a role for that society. And when we say society, it's themselves, their peers, their family, their community, their city, their country, and so on. So that is the main first pillar. And we always start from that point, actually, when, 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 when we talk about the Aflatoon program. Uh, the other pillar, or the second main pillar, is rights and responsibilities. So again, uh, through games, uh, through participation, debates, and so on, uh, we invite the children to discover what are their rights. And Aflatoon, we invite them to discover their rights uh, according to the United Nations Chart for child, right, uh, for child Rights. And for Africa, of course, we invite them to discover the uh, Universal United Nations Chart for uh, the Rights of the Children ratified by the members of the African Union. So once they discover, they discover their rights, for Aflatoon is not enough because you know your right, but you need to act upon that right. And that's why we call it rights and responsibilities. If you have a right for protection, you also have the responsibility to inform your peers, to inform your guardians, your parents, what you are doing, where you are going, etc. If you have the right to drink water and to have healthy food and so on, you also have the responsibility to not waste it and so on and so on. So that is how we look at the rights, basically, from the Aflatoon perspective, it's more from an active and a responsible behavior. So for us, these two um, core elements, they, 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 they basically form what we call social education or the life skills. They are the basic of that one. Now, to start the financial education, we found out that the best way to introduce financial education is to start with the behavior. And that is, we that is where we introduce the, uh, the core element of saving and spending. So we invite children from the very beginning of the program and in parallel as well, uh, when they learn about their personal understanding, exploration, rights and responsibilities, we also invite them to start the practice of saving as well. And you know, many of us will, will ask, but how are we gonna ask children to save if they don't have money? How are we gonna ask them? That? There are gonna be so many issues with, with that. So with the Aflatoon program, we make sure that the saving uh, and spending core element is not about money, uh, but it's about the behavior. 
It's about the frequency. We are not interested in the Aplatoon program uh, on how much have you saved by the end of the month or by the end of the year, but we are more interested on uh, did you save regularly? Did you make sure that every time you had pocket money or every time you had a certain resource, did you save it frequently? And, and, and uh, with a frequency that repeats itself, so it becomes a habit and that habit becomes a behavior itself. And again, when we talk about the saving and spending, we don't talk only about money. We also talk about other resources. It can be water, it can be electricity, it can be clothes, it can be paper that we use in, 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 um, in school, for example, and so on. So anything that can be saved, that can be used for future uh, uses, for instance. And again, same as rights and responsibilities, we do save in order to spend. So we also introduce um, responsible and, and, and right behavior when it comes to spending. So we try to make that behavior this way, is that if a child, for example, if she sees something and she wants to buy something, the first thing that we'd like to uh, embed in that behavior is, do you want or do you need? that thing that you want to spend the money on, for example, resources on. So, and that is where we introduce certain elements of critical thinking, for example, for the children, where themselves with what they have learned as their role in society, what they have learned about their responsibility towards their rights and that of their peers, they will also build a responsible behavior in spending itself. Um, and that is one really core element, and it's an activity that is very core to the Aflatoon program by itself. Um, this fourth core element is what we call planning and budgeting. Now that we have children that have built a certain social skill, that build maybe a certain capital, it's not necessarily to have a capital, uh, but we encourage that as well. So encourage, we encourage the children to, to, to work together, to save together and so on. So we introduce, uh, we, sorry, we, we, we notice that the children start coming up with ideas. They start noticing that there is either a problematic or there is an issue that they want to solve in their school, in their community, but even for themselves. And in order to do that, they need certain tools, they need certain skills, they need certain organization. And that is where we introduce elements of planning and budgeting to help them a little bit plan ahead what they want to do as activity, but also see if they will be able to do it. Do they have enough capital to do it? Will they have to plan that saving by itself, basically to match that, the, the, that project that they want to do, etc. So, and these are tools that they practice again through games, that they practice through projects, that they practice through different uh, ways of, 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 of uh, participatory learning. So these are four elements that are basically building the skills and that are embedding certain behavior in the children. And the fifth core element is what we call social and or financial enterprise. And this is basically a core element that embeds, or sorry, that envelops all the other core elements. Basically, it's an achievement by itself. And this is where we invite at the end of every year or at the end of every sessions, for example, when, 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 when it's been implemented, we invite the children either individually or by small groups or by, by a big group to start working on the development of an enterprise. And that enterprise can have two different objectives and sometimes three objectives. One, it has to be social, uh, where there is a certain social um, uh, return, let's say. And for example, I'll give you the example of uh, a program that we saw in Kenya where children noticed that there is a lot of, um, uh, in their school at least where they were working, uh, there was a lot of people selling alcohol and drugs and, and, and cigarettes and so on, tobacco and so on. So what the children did basically is that they saved throughout the year and they printed cards, they printed, uh, they, 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 they communicated, but they also mobilized the, so the, the, the community around themselves. And the project was basically to have a march around the school to demonstrate against selling alcohol, against selling cigarettes and tobacco and drugs around the school. And that had a social return because uh, the, 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 the authorities in charge of that community basically have acted because they received requests. They received uh, the backing of the parents of the children on those requests. So that is the type of social enterprise. And it can be, social enterprise can be about environment, can be about protection, can be about education itself, can be about health, anything that can be social. The financial enterprise, however, 
the objective there is to make a profit at the end of the of the of the project. But again, here, whenever we do this, we have to be careful actually to not uh, fall into the trap of child labor, for example. That every time we do enterprises, especially when we talk about financial enterprises, we do them with the purpose of having an impact, a social impact, but also, of course, learning about how to generate a certain profit. But at the same time, it is about the behavior. At the same time, it's about learning. So we make sure that that enterprise happens within the confinement of the school, happens within the, the frame of learning. So we don't encourage children to skip schools in order to do a project, for example, or to focus only about money enterprises. And there is the third type of enterprise, which is basically an enterprise that is at the same time social and, 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 and financial, where you can build a social return, but at the same time build a certain. That is for the five core elements so far. Sorry. Um, now, these programs actually that we do for Aflatoon, we do believe that we need to start them as early as possible. Uh, there is a lot of research that shows that um, social behavior, but even financial behavior, is basically well marked and well embedded when it's taught between the age of four all the way to seven years old. And that's why actually we think and we advocate with many organizations that we work with to push for this social and financial education for as early as possible. Uh, anything that we do, any behavior that I have today is something that I build a foundation for when I was a child. So the earlier, the better. And uh, as some of our partners said, uh, I think it was from Malawi, they said, catch them early. And that's what we try to do. So we have different programs for different ages because for different ages, there are different pedagogical approaches. So we have the Afla Taught program, which is an Afla Toon program for toddlers. And that is for three to six years old. It's a, it's a program that looks basically at uh, how to socialize, how to build certain behavior, how to build resilience and so on. But at the same time, it comes with a family toolkit because uh, the child at that age, uh, it's not enough to do something at the crash or at the school or at the community center or anything, no, but most of it happened with the family itself. So we do have a family toolkit that supports the parent on, uh, on, on building that sort of behavior. Then we have the Aflatoon program, which look at the six to 14 years old. And again, for this age, we are looking at the formal and the non-formal because we want to reach all of the children. It's not only the children in the school, but also the children out of the school. And six to 14 is basically the age of what we call uh, globally basic education. And again, it's a series of, uh, of, of activities that happen at each grade. So there is some sort of repetition to make sure that behavior happens, but that repetition adjusts itself to the, the, to, to the age of the child. So there will be less, for example, less enterprises at year one, but will we be much more of them at year seven, six, eight, for instance. Um, then we have the Aflatin program, which is a Aflatoon program for teenagers, so from 15 all the way to, to, to 20. And it's built, uh, again, it's built around participation, it's built around working together, but it focuses more about on peer-to-peer -peer learning. The Aflatoon, Aflatot, you request more facilitators, you request teachers and so on to be trained to deliver. But for the Aflatin, there is a possibility that the teenagers take on the program by themselves, basically. If there is a club, and if there are leaders, it's possible to, to have that. It's also good and it's always good to have um, moderators. So the facilitators and the teachers are more moderators in, 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 in that age. And then of course we have the Afla Youth Program where basically we take the social and financial education from the behavior and then we put it into the practice basically. And that's where we go to entrepreneurship, we go to employability and so on. And of course we also, adapt some of our programs basically to, to certain context where we build certain life skills, financial education behavior for peace, for instance, or for agriculture and so on. So there are different uh, aspects. I just want to make sure that everything is okay. Yeah, sounds good, Hassan. Thank you, Moit. And um, yeah. again, uh, when, when we look at these five core elements, etc., as you see, when we look at the outcomes we're looking for, we're looking at positive attitudes, we're looking at social awareness, we're looking at 
financial, why not entrepreneurial skills and so on. We look at activities and practices and we, we, it's not a program where you need to listen and absorb, but it's rather absorb, but also act. So whatever you have absorbed is put into practice and become a behavior itself. And we do believe actually that we contribute directly to the sustainable development goals directly. There is about eight sustainable goals that we, we contribute to directly into them, such as the education, the quality of education, uh, such as the environment, for example, such as the gender equality and so on and so on. Um, and there are the other ones where we uh, contribute indirectly. There is always an indirect contribution. So this is, for instance, the Aflatine program, basically, where you can see that uh, for the personal understanding and exploration, we talk about who am I, who is my family, who, what, what is my community, what are my goals, what are my dreams, am I looking at my career, and so on. So we, we, we try to build from self, and then we start to go out a little bit of the self. And as we go out of the self, we also build action. We also build uh, a behavior. And that's how, how, it, how it works. And this is basically just a little bit of um, a table of content of one of our programs. And you can see how we break down a little bit some of those core elements. And if you see at the planning and budgeting, for instance, we introduce elements such as the brainstorming, the SWOT analysis, the SMART goal setting, and so on. So what we, which we think are elements that can be very, very helpful for the, for, for, for the teenagers at that age, basically, to, 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 to plan and budget and be entrepreneurial. The Afla Youth, for example, uh, is a program where um, before we go into employability or entrepreneurship, we always started with the foundation that is very important, and that is the social and financial skills. We build that foundation, and once we build that foundation, only then we can build the employability skills. Only then we can build the entrepreneurship skills. And this is a program, for instance, where a learner can choose either one of the two tracks, either the employability track or the uh, entrepreneurial track. Some students can also choose both of them if they wish to. But again, I would like to emphasize on that is that before building entrepreneurial skills, we need to have social skills. We need to have financial skills. Those will be the foundations. If the foundation is very weak, you can be naturally born entrepreneur, but if you don't have the right behavior, you might, their chances are pretty high basically to, 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 to that, that enterprise or that project don't, doesn't go too far. And when we talk about entrepreneurial here, et cetera, we're talking about the plethora of, of youth. We're talking about the scale. We're not talking about one specific uh, young person who's entrepreneur or not. And um, as we do this program, we, 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 we also um, take into consideration the fact that uh, it needs to be adapted to national context, to, na to, to national cultures, to national histories, languages, and so on and so on. So our programs are easily contextualized and easily adapted to environment in which they, they, they are implemented. And you can see here that, for example, we have uh, certain, for example, this was from, 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 from Egypt, uh, the, the one in the bottom with a little bit of the river and the two kids, where the program was uh, implemented by the National Council for Childhood and Motherhood, and it was focusing more on, on protection. And then they took the program and they uh, basically made sure that it is geared toward the protection of the children. There are other elements, such as the one at the far right, where we talk about financial social literacy for youth in cocoa growing communities where basically uh, we try to build resilience in, in the agriculture world because um, the youth don't like agriculture anymore. It's a tough world, it's a tough uh, environment. But at the same time, we try to build resilience to show that there are resources in the environment of agriculture. There are uh, capital uh, to, 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 to make use of and, to, and to, in order to build one life, in order, in order to build one's career. And at the same time, uh, we also look at how can we also make those documents. Basically, let, let me go back a little bit. Is that uh, most of uh, most of these documents here that, that that I'm showing you are programs, are basically booklets uh, that are teachers' guides and teachers' um, uh, uh, guidelines, basically, and support documents. Uh, we don't give the learners a manual to, to read through, etc., because most of the activities are active. Uh, sessions. Most of the activities are 
uh, debates, our discussion and facilitation. So we try to support as much as we can, the facilitators, the teachers, the coaches, the mentors, etc. The learning happens by doing. Uh, the, 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 that's what we look for, uh, actually. And this is, uh, and, and most of it happens basically by providing training and by providing these booklets. But at the same time, uh, we cannot cover all the teachers in one country. We cannot cover all the facilitators in a certain NGO, etc. So that's why we build digital content, basically one to support um, the, these facilitators and teachers in refresh their training, in refresh their capacity to train and so on. But at the same time, also build digital content and tools to interact directly. So it is also possible for, especially for the young people, to interact with the screen and then learn, uh, by, uh, and, and, and learn by going out and doing certain activities and then coming back and filling in a certain text, doing a quiz and so on and so on. Um, this is something that you might hear quite often in, in, in the Aflatoon program. Child-centered or active learning methodologies or sometimes serious fun. Uh, a lot of our training basically are, are about engaging. A lot of our training are about how can we take the facilitators, take the, the, the organizations or those who implement the program away from monologues like I'm doing right now. And I'm tired already, to be honest with you, for instance, you see? Uh, but if I was facilitating, or if we were in a room together doing a game, etc., then the learning is pretty much shared. The learning comes from everybody. So all what I will be doing was is facilitate and guide and ask very guiding questions, basically to trigger the right answers, to trigger uh, the, the, the curiosity and go and look for the right answers and so on. So that's why what we call child-centered centered active learning methodologies, because we believe that uh, life skills and financial education, it's not something that can be taught using rote learning, where a teacher stands in, the, in front of a blackboard and speaks. That cannot happen. It's not possible to tell you saving is good. You can reproduce that in an exam and say saving is good, but are you saving? Are you acting on your resources? Are you behaving in a way that, that basically manages these resources positively? So that's why this active learning is very, very important for us. It's actually the, uh, we can call it the magic, uh, the, 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 the magic ingredient in the Aflatoon program. That's what makes the Aflatoon program successful, actually. And when we do the trainings and when we do the uh, capacity building workshop and so on, we do focus more on that because the concept is very easy to grasp but teaching those concepts are the tough uh, issue now does it work does social and financial education work um, we we had the opinion that it works because we believed in it and we had built objectives in the theory of change etc but we have also done uh, over 75 studies and evaluation around the globe since we started actually and we have noticed that for instance there is improved uh, self-awareness improves self-image and confidence, for example. There is increased critical thinking that whenever you are faced with a situation, there is a process of questions that happen and that triggers the mind into taking the right decision. Uh, there is increased in participation, increased in knowing about your rights and acting about those rights. There is improved behavior around savings and there is active entrepreneurial attitude that a lot of the children, if not all of them, that we see in our program, as soon as they go almost right into the middle of the program, they already want to act. They already want to build a certain program. And with these evidence and with these uh, different uh, ways of working, the Aflatoon program has been recognized basically as being a leading uh, organization or a program in social and financial education. Institute. And there are several documentations there, such as especially the, 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 the Brookings Institution, the, the milling learning, where basically it looks at um, the effectiveness in scale and how this program is easy to scale and implement at scale as well. Um, so we have also many other evidences that we can share with you later on, actually, that we, where we did several RCTs and we looked at the behaviors before and after, but also in comparison with other groups and so on. Um, these are some examples of the uh, of our main programs or the highlights of our programs. For example, we're in Bangladesh. Uh, we work with BRAC. Uh, 
where Aflatoon basically supports uh, different initiatives in the empowerment of girls, but also build the behavior and build the foundations for the cash transfer programs for women, for instance. Um, in India, for example, where, where we have one of our largest programs, basically we have all of these activities and you can see from the teacher training to working uh, in groups, etc., to the visiting uh, and education visits. Uh, something that is very important actually is within the Afla 2 program is very important to also take the children out or take not only the children but the young people, take them out of the classroom environment uh, because the learning can also happen outside. And this is what we are trying to, in, to, 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 to encourage the schools to go. Go to a bank, discover what happens inside the bank, uh, discover what is money, go to a museum, for example, go outside, go to your community and find out what's happening. Go to an enterprise and factory and learn about what's happening. And uh, again, these are again uh, other examples of, of, uh, of our different programs where we look at girls' education, we look at young entrepreneurs in the Kokowa communities, in agriculture communities, we look at uh, the migration issues, how can we support children and young people in, in the migra migration context and so on. Now, what, one, something that is very important for us is that um, with all the social and financial education, the objective is to create change, basically, and to create a positive social and financial entrepreneurial change. But if we want to do that, if we want to really create that change, it has to happen in scale. Uh, we cannot go to a country that has 50 million population and then only have a 1,000 children doing social and financial education. That will not create change. That will be very good for that 1,000. That's not, uh, it's going to be very good for them. But is it going to be really impacting their society? That, and that is why we look at different ways on how we can bring the social and financial education to a majority of children and young people. And we do that actually through, um, through what we call the Aflatoon social franchise model, where basically uh, the Aflatoon secretariat actually does not implement the program. Uh, we are rather a, um, a resource center. We are rather a secretariat that facilitates information, capacity building, development of programs, learning, research, etc., with all its partners. So as a, as, as a secretariat, we build partnerships with different organizations. They can be local associations from the smallest NGOs in the country to the international organizations. And you can see here, we're talking about Child Fund, we're talking about uh, Mercy Corps, we're talking about Batonga and so on. But we also talk about very small organizations and also uh, other national institutions. And it's these organizations basically that implement the program, but not only they implement it, they also um, advocate for its integration, for its introduction into different policies around education, different policies around development, entrepreneurship, and so on. And, uh, and that is how actually we, uh, we have built all this network of learners, basically where today, up to 2018, basically we have reached 8 million, uh, 600,000 children. But I think in 2019, uh, we are over 10 million uh, beneficiaries from the program. Now, how do we do that? Basically, we try to do that to, uh, through a low cost and a high impact. And how do we do that is basically by making sure that all of our partners that we show here have in-house uh, capacity skills, in-house built training capacity to do the program. So it's not only the Secretariat of Latoon that can do the training, but also all of our partners are equipped to do the training. And they are also invited to do the training by themselves for, for, for the others. So as I mentioned, uh, we are looking at, uh, the, the, there were basically two main areas where we were working. Uh, we are, were working with civil society and the NGOs. And at the same time, we are looking at the national education systems, and that's basically working with ministries of primary education, secondary education. But we thought there is another uh, big space out there, basically, where a lot of learning is happening, and that's the cooperative movement. And this is where we have actually started talking with ICA, and we build those MOUs in Africa and Asia Pacific, is to see how can we bring this social and financial education and have it support the cooperative movement. And how can we have the cooperative movement 
take on social and financial education and make it a, a skill that is uh, important for, for, for their beneficiaries, be it their members, be it the affiliate of their members, or be it also the industry in which they work in, how can they build the skills within that industry. But at the same time, we are also looking at building uh, relationships with the private sector, with the faith-based network to also bring certain uh, break certain barriers and look at certain micro and uh, financial institutions, for instance, to uh, build more of the access and build more of opportunities to benefit from services. Because you can have good financial education, but if you don't have the services out there to support you, it's a little bit, um, uh, it's a little bit not really reaching the goal that we would like to have. So uh, today we reached over, actually, actually this is an old number, we are reaching to over 300, uh, 300 organizations in over 100 countries uh, globally. And as you see, I mean, we, uh, we don't work only in the developing countries, but we believe that this social and financial education is also needed in the industrialized countries as we say. And it's a behavior that is much more needed. As a matter of fact, uh, in the last PISA uh, survey that was done in, in, in 2019, uh, it was found out that the young people who have smartphones and tablets uh, are basically having a negative financial behavior when it comes to buying and when it comes to making transactions through those phones. Uh, because buying things now for them is only a click away. Uh, it's not anymore having to think about what is in my pocket, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So falling into negative behavior is much, much uh, negative financial behavior. It's much easier with those tools and modalities. So we also think that it's very, very important to already tackle that issues and already try and 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 build right behavior around those issues. And. Um, our social franchise is also a model that grows as well. Uh, so we are looking at working, of course, through the model of uh, international NGOs, local associations, local NGOs. We are looking at the collaboration with the cooperative. And I think one of the, the main uh, program that we have, and we will learn more about it in a little bit, is the, is the Philippines program with the cooperative NATCO. But we're also looking at how can private sector and government work together with support from the NGO, for instance, to build financial education. And this is the case, and that's how uh, the private sector in Jordan, along with the Ministry of Education, they brought social and financial education to, 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 to the education system by itself. How can we look at the financial inclusion strategies and support them with this? How can we work with the multilateral agencies in their different, um, in, in their different approaches, in their different programs and so on? How can we contribute to that? So these are the main ways in which we support these and these are the main uh, models that we are trying to, 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 to pursue in order to achieve a certain sustained change basically but this is pretty much the same and um to, today we have the today we have the the the, the case of the covid 19 and this is again a very big wake up call i mean everybody is looking uh with the covid 19 happened when the lockdown happened there were a lot of issues around resilience. There were a lot of issues around financial safety net. There were a lot of issues about responsibility towards the other, et cetera, when these instructions and measures were taken. So we think that the COVID-19 is a big wake up call, not only to look at the behavior or the importance of social financial education, but also the modalities in which to happen. How can we reach out to the majority through different ways? And with the COVID-19, we're looking again at digital solutions. We're looking at how can we support the media, for instance, how can we support the TV and radio and other modalities to reach out to, to, to the populations with the right. And that is in a nutshell, um, uh, the, uh, the, the Aflatoon basically and uh, what it is about. I will, uh, Diana, please, can you tell me, do you have, do you have a few minutes more before we move to Hazel? Um, we have a couple of questions here, uh, if you want to just go through them quickly. Um, sure, C can you please let me know, yeah. Yeah, um, mostly people are wondering if we can share some of our books and, and our uh, materials to them. Yeah, yeah so uh, actually this is what I wanted to, to talk about is that, uh, and this is the, 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 the reason why we're having this webinar, 
is basically to introduce you to these concepts and also invite you to talk to us directly in order to, to, to in order basically to encourage partnerships and encourage working together around projects, which we'll see later on. The sharing of the books and so on, we can share many things with you, but to have full access of everything that we have, it has to happen through uh, the partnership process that we have. Great, thank you, Hassan. Um, so if, um, if we can move forward, yeah. I think um, our next panelist today is Hazel Modino. She's a representative of NATCO. Uh, she will be sharing uh, their experiences with the Aflatoon program. Uh, Hazel, do uh, you have the floor? Thank you so much. A pleasant uh, good morning, good afternoon to everyone. So first of all, thank you so much Aflatoon International for giving as the opportunity to present the NATCOS Aflatoon program. So let me share. Can you see it now? Yes, we can see it. Yes, Hazel. Okay, for a while. Can you make it full, uh, Hazel? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Can you please uh, help me? That's in the below of the uh, your screen. It's screen view. Uh, Hazel, do you see that yellow little square at the bottom? A little bit on the right side. Go a bit lower. Go there. If you go to the right side of it, that one. Yes. Just go down. Go down again. There, and yeah. Press. Yeah. Click that one. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So let me start. I want you to introduce our organization, National Confederation of Cooperatives. And NETCO and the co-op sector strongly believe that in order to break the cycle of poverty, uh, people need to create opportunities for themselves to improve their economic well-being. So this idea of self-help, self-governance, and self-responsibility is the principles of NETCO's efforts on sustainable development and people empowerment for the past 43 years. And NETCO has always been committed to providing youth inclusive financial services through its programs and activities. And one such avenue that opened for NATCO was its partnership with Aflatoon International. And the partnership started when the former NATCO Chief Executive Officer Vicente Paez was invited by Jeru Bilimoria for an international meeting in the Netherlands. So the meeting witnessed the gathering of 10 countries who pioneered the concept of social and financial education. So upon returning home, Mr. Paez presented the program to the NETCO Board of Directors who immediately approved its implementation. The, the NETCO adopted the Aflatoon program as its main platform for youth development in the cooperative movement in the Philippines. So we contextualized it into social and financial education for elementary and secondary schools. The primary cooperatives affiliated with NETCO serve as a financial institutions of choice to service the savings programs of ch uh, school children in the tar in target schools. For our methodology, the Aflatoon program in the Philippines stands out as a school-based program that allows children from diverse socioeconomic backgrounds to gain access to savings 
account and learn about the importance of the five core elements that can be integrated into their subject areas. Then, NATCO and DepEd partnerships started more than a decade ago, and DepEd consistently support the initiatives and innovations of NATCO. As of July 2020, we are partnering with 158 cooperatives across the country. And our partnership with Department of Education allowed us to train 8,255 teachers in 1,777 schools. So, and 385,000 children are maintaining savings accounts with a total savings of more than 355 million pesos or 7.1 million USD. For our scale of strategies, first is the continuous advocacy to make financial education a part of the national curriculum with cooperatives as allies. So NAPCO, uh, MOA between DepEd, Aflatoon International, and NAPCO in promoting social education, financial literacy, um, entrepreneurship lessons in relevant courses in K-12 program. And DepEd created the Technical Working Group on Financial Literacy Program in Basic Education to formulate and adopt policies on implementing and institutionalizing a financial literacy program for all learners. Mm -hmm. So as a member of PWG, NAPCO and Aflatoon will provide assistance to DepEd by providing First, provision of resources and expertise in the development of curriculum and learning materials. Provision of resources in the conduct of capacity building programs for implementers. Facilitation of access to financial inclusion mechanism. And last is the assistance in monitoring and evaluation of financial literacy initiatives. So this is the um, Aflatoon process flow in NAPCO. Uh, first, NAPCO presents the Aflatoon program to our partner co-op. And if once approved, once they approve the program, the co-op submits the terms of preference, the board resolution, and the list of partner schools, actually maximum of six schools for the pilot. Then next, after that, NATCO coordinates with DepEd Division for the approval and support. Then, NATCO and DepEd agree on the proposed date for the conduct of Aflatoon Teachers Training. NATCO conducts a two-day teachers training. Usually, it is uh, Saturday and Sunday. So that we cannot uh, disturb the class. And then after that, the organization of laboratory co-op and Aflatoon program launching. And then um, Aflatoon Diving School. So this is the start. The teacher starts uh, start integrating their lesson and the partner co-op starts collecting deposits from schools and Aflatoon activities are also conducted. And then after that, the culmination activity. So the partner co-op awards deserving pupils, teachers, and schools during graduation and recognition day. And lastly, uh, the NAT NATCO and the partner co-op conduct review and reflection meetings with the partner schools. 
So this is the photos during the Platoon teachers training. Then after that, uh, NATCO provides the teachers with the Aflatoon modules that they used in teaching social and financial education to school children after their training. So NATCO, in partnership with City Foundation, support the goals of Deaf Ed's mother, mother tongue-based multilingual education program. So integrating the four, four major regional languages into the program module. So books from grade one, from grade two, and grade three are available uh, into four local languages. So we have Cebuano, Ilocano, Pilipinon, and Tagalog. Uh, uh, program launching school, so NATCO and partner co-ops provide the marketing collaterals to promote the program with the partner schools. So usually uh, during the launching of the program, it is a one-day one activity. We invite, um, we invite teachers, some teachers, principals, uh, the students, and also the parents, and we, we introduce the Appleton program to them. After that, so every year in solidarity with the Aflatoon Global Network, Aflatoon members join the simultaneous celebration of International Aflatoon Day and Global Manu Week. So different activities, um, cooperative organize different activities for the Aflatoon members. So this global celebration also links the Aflatoon members from the Philippines to the rest of the world. Hmm. So these are the factors for the successful Im implementation of the Aflatoon program. So first we have the strategic role and the support of the Department of Education. Next is the good governance and the full commitment of the cooperative. We also have the support and the acceptance of the parents the commitment and motivation of the teachers, and lastly, the active participation of the children. So these are the factors for the successful implementation. <clears throat> for the encouraging and guiding cops to organize and strengthen their laboratory cooperatives, NATCO helps the partner co-ops in organizing their youth laboratory cooperatives and provided them with technical assistance in the conduct of Aplatoon activities. <clears throat> then we also have regional review and reflection meeting. So NATCO organized re regional re uh, evaluation meetings and these were attended by the Aplatoon coordinators, the managers, uh, DepEd representatives, to share their best practices, to identify uh, some challenges, and discuss also their future plans. So the result will also help fill the gaps and improve our system for an overall sustainable implementation. Number four, the establishment of the children and youth unit to manage the program. Next is the continuous engagement and capacity building for Aplatoon coordinators and partners. So NATCO also train experts from the Department of Education and um, staff from the local cooperatives who can efficiently deliver and advocate the program in their fields of specialization. So the national trainers, actually we conducted three batches of the national trainers. Uh, they are committed to nurture the program expansion by facilitating activities for children, teachers, and other partner cooperatives. Then we, uh, we have the recognition and awards to outstanding children and youth leaders and teachers 
and also the awarding of the top five Afyatun coordinators. And lastly, to sustain the interest of the youth in the cooperative system, the National Youth Congress is being held biannually, where next generation leaders share experiences, best practices, address um, relevant issues, and strategize for the sustainable growth of the co-op youth network. So that's all. So if you have a Facebook account, kindly like our page. It's Atlatoon Philippines. So thank you. Thank you, Hassel. A very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, so if anyone have questions for Hassel or for Hassan, uh, now we have time for, uh, for a Q&A. Uh, thank you, Diana. I just wanted to add thank you again, Hazel. Uh, thank you, the, 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 the NATCO Aflatoon uh, collaboration is, is, is a, a long standing and enduring collaboration, uh, which has yielded very, very positive results. And actually, it's a very good model to show that um, the, the, the Aflatoon uh, partners, such as NATCO, uh, not only they start with a small program, but they also own the program themselves so it becomes their program it becomes part of their strategies and so on and not only they implement it but they also advocate for it and they also support the ministry of education in in, in nationalizing the program within the national curricula so th that's why we choose to, to to highlight this program because it really really covers all of the areas in which we uh, we encourage our partner to do basically thank you again Hazel. Welcome. <clears throat> well, if everyone has, if, if anyone has a question, please uh, feel free to unmute yourself and say it out loud or write it down on the chat. Either for Hassan or for Hassel or for anyone in Appleton or ICA. <laughs> Well, thank, you. thank you very much for the presentation. Um, speaking on behalf of uh, Egypt here, um, I think uh, um, most of our questions will be uh, in regards to the next phase of the presentation today and how this partnership will work for each individual country and for each individual entity. So we will reserve our questions until the next phase. But thank you very much for the uh, earlier presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Sharif. Um, maybe I can answer because I see some of the questions in the chat uh, window talking about the different ages and so on. Yes. Uh, actually, indeed, we do have programs for different ages, uh, from all the way from the early childhood to, to the youth. And even the youth program, they can indeed also be adapted. They can also be implemented with uh, older ages. The, 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 the numbers that you see in the age are just indication but it's possible according to the needs and according to how much do you want to do with the program. It's very possible indeed to, to, to use that program. Uh, as you have seen, uh, we worked with uh, older women aged from 40 all the way to 50 actually, uh, to support the cash transfer program and so on. And we, we used the same Aflatoon concept, but adapted to that age because the, the way of learning is different. But again, we do indeed have programs for the different ages and the approaches differ from one age to another to match the learning ability and, and, and the approach. Thank you, Hassan. We also have a question here from Connie uh, regarding how to adapt our Aflatoon approach to our youth groups in health-focused cooperatives. Uh, thank you, Diana. Um, indeed, this, this uh, touches a little bit on uh, an aspect of the partnership that we have is that uh, the program that we have, we call them the core curricula or the core programs. Uh, once we enter into a partnership with an organization, these core curricula are available to these organizations. But 
they are highly encouraged to go through a process of contextualization. Uh, we do already have contextualized programs for a certain region, but the partners or the organizations who implement it are invited to do a further contextualization, one, to match the reality of where they work, but again, to also match what uh, context are they working on. For instance, you mentioned health uh, uh, here, for instance. So all the rights and responsibilities, for example, all the projects or all the planning that happen or all the learning about self that we are doing, that can be focused on health, for example. And the, the main example and the most uh, recurring example or topic that we have in the Aflatu program is that of uh, sexual reproductive health and rights, for instance, uh, where we uh, developed a program, we call it the Aflatine Plus, uh, where basically we use that program to support girls' sexual rights, uh, right and, uh, and health and rights, basically, reproductive health and rights. And it comes again from the behavior side. It comes again from how can I use uh, my resources? How can I use uh, my skills? How can I use my talent in order to behave positively in that specific context? Thank you, Hassan. Uh, another question on the chat uh, related to how does the partnership work? Uh, is our partnership with the national organizations or the primary cooperatives? Th thank you, Diana. I indeed, we do have uh, we we do have two different approaches to to, to, to partnerships. Uh, one is, for instance, the one that we have with ICA Asia Pacific, ICA Africa, and other organizations where the objective is to promote uh, social financial education. The objective is to advocate for it with certain uh, institutions, with NGOs, and so on. So that is more of an advocacy partnership, uh, and it's an open partnership, of course. The other partnership where that focuses on the implementation uh, it follows, however, a specific um, a partnership process that we have is the social franchise, basically, uh, where there is a membership and there are certain services and there are certain services that are open once you become uh, a member of that. Uh, we are very much open, basically, to uh, connect you directly to our program managers for each region, and they can lead, uh, they can, they can uh, guide you. Uh, through each step of that partnership process and, and show you more about that. So the, the idea from here from the webinar is just to give you an idea of the concept. Uh, for the partnership process, we will make sure that a follow-up is happening. If you are in Asia, you'll be connected with my colleague uh, Lucky, for example. If you are in Anglophone Africa, you'll be connected to my colleague Tijan, and they will drive you through that process and, and, and explain to you that process step by step. Um, again, Still in that process, because I'm looking at the Mozambique, for example, uh, sorry, I'm looking at the, the case of the national organizations. We can indeed build a partnership with a national organization like NATCO, for example, that works with different members, or we can work directly with those members by themselves. But of course, we appreciate that there is a network within the network, if I can say that. Is that we appreciate that within the country, it's better to be together. It's better to support each other because there is much more learning uh, it's much more cost effective, even in the part, even from the partnership side of it. Um, Mozambique. Um, how can Mozambique achieve financial inclusion cooperatives through the Aflatu program? Um, uh, Mozambique has just launched actually its national strategy for financial inclusion, and they are also pushing for a national plan for financial education in which we are involved. So we will be very much happy basically to bring you in the table and to bring you around to also have the cooperative play their role in, in, in supporting those, those, uh, those strategies in financial inclusion. And you can do that indeed. Uh, one of the ideas of supporting financial inclusion is indeed building the behavior because we think that in order to achieve positive results in financial inclusion, you need financial behavior, positive financial behavior. And that comes through financial education. And we are very happy to, 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 par to partner with you as well and support you technically for this uh, in order to achieve those goals. Uh, Abir, um, for, uh, for, for, for Palestine, we will, we will make sure to link you up with our colleague Shirin 
by the way, she is from Palestine as well. Uh, she's the program manager for the Middle East and uh, North African countries. And again, she will also support you in looking at the partnership model. And it's based on that partnership model. We will, of course, share with you some of the manuals and also show you how, how it works. We do have some program in Palestine. It will be good as well to link you up as well in, in that. Uh, something very important that we are doing in the Middle East and North Africa is that we are also partnering with UNICEF to, to, to promote and also to support the development of the life skills and, econ and uh, citizenship education, which is basically more or less the social education that the Afghan uh, is doing. And that is the main driving program that we have in, in the Middle East and North Africa. But of course, on the side, there are different programs in Jordan, from all the way from Morocco to, 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 to Iraq and Iran, basically. We'll be very happy to connect you to that. Thank you, Hassan. Um, I think we have now 10 minutes of break. Um, I guess we can come back with other questions afterwards. Sure. I, I just want to uh, reiterate that uh, myself and my colleagues uh, with Mohit and Rose, uh, since they are our focal point in ICA Asia Pacific and ICA Africa, uh, we will make sure to connect you with the right uh, colleagues in Aflatoon uh, in order to bring more answers, but also to uh, guide you through the different questions around the partnership as well as around the concept and so on. And, and once again, we will be sharing documentation uh, for your information, not only the presentation, but also other documentation that will be very, very useful for us. I actually have a question, if you don't mind, uh, forward, if we still have some questions after the presentation today, how do we communicate if you can share um, emails or uh, uh, contact persons? Thank you. Uh, yes, indeed. We will, we will make sure uh, in the reporting of this webinar, it will be with a follow-up because there will be uh, a next steps. And one of the key steps is basically to make sure to connect uh, every participant in this webinar uh, with the focal point in Aflatoon that is working in their region. So we make sure that uh, language is considered, we make sure that context and knowledge of the region is considered and so on. So that uh, we will share emails, phone numbers, etc., to make sure that those connections are happening. Perfect. Thank you, Hassan. Um, let's take a 10 minute, minute break. We'll be back at uh, 11.30 or in eight minutes exactly. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. That's 12.30 our time. Yes. Hi everyone, um, are we all back? Hassan, Mohit, uh, Rose? I'm here. Wait here. Um, Perfect. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, so it's time to start this, the third part of this uh, session. Mohit, Rose and Hassan will be, uh, will be working on the brainstorming part uh, on different topics. So let me just uh, share the questions. Uh, we're hoping that this part of the session is very interactive, so everyone, please feel free to, to comment. Um, Hassan, would you like to uh, explain the, the next part? Uh, yes, thank you very much, uh, Diana. 
Uh, so for, for this next part of the webinar, <coughs> rather than have uh, a, a monologue from one or two people, uh, we would like to invite everybody to, 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 to have a discussion and we will try with the moderator to also uh, have everyone after one go pr provide some answers and some feedback. So what we will be looking at basically is we would like to address four areas on um, how can we move on basically with um, uh, joining forces between Aflatoon and the cooperatives. Uh, and we thought uh, about looking at four areas. One, uh, have a discussion and brainstorm, basically the, all, all of the session will be a brainstorm on, on the partnership. Uh, considering that Aflatoon has a social franchise model, etc., uh, we would like to uh, ask you basically and talk to you about how can we uh, work around this partnership to make it fit and to make it beneficiary for both of us. The second topic is on the project and that's basically to look at the um, opportunities and areas in which we can support each other with our own expertise from Afatun expertise and the cooperative expertise depending on the industry in which you in which you are working. So how can we support existing, upcoming, maybe future project and so on, and also what type of project and so on. The third area is on program development. And this is where uh, we are looking basically at um, taking this social and financial education as well as the cooperative model to the next level. How can we develop something that can, that can uh, basically be beneficiary for the cooperative model, but also achieve the objectives and goals of social and financial education? And this is beyond what is existing at Aflatoon already. This is for us to uh, brainstorm already at this point based on the uh, ideas that you gathered from the uh, concept of edge and so on. And the fourth area in on the expertise exchanges, and that is basically how uh, can we support each other, but not necessarily have it as a project, not necessarily develop a program. Uh, how can, for example, when Aflatoon is developing a certain program on, say, youth entrepreneurship, how can the cooperative uh, uh, world or model basically bring that expertise to Aflatoon and support in making a better program? And vice versa, if the cooperatives, for instance, are developing a certain program and so on, how can they make use of the Aflatoon expertise to support that without necessarily having Aflatoon to implement anything on the other end? So these will be the four main areas we will be discussing. So on the, in the first one, uh, Rosen and Mohit, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Rosie will be uh, uh, facilitating the partnership, is that right? Yes, please. And uh, Mohit will be facilitating the projects and myself yes. will be facilitating the program development and expertise exchange. So we have a set of questions and uh, Rose and Mohit will facilitate that for us so we can have uh, a positive and uh, rich discussion. Uh, one question um, to you, Hassan. Do they yes. write the ideas on the chat or they just um, um, unmute and give us the ideas? Yes, actually, um, I think that it's possible as well to, uh, to raise a hand, I think, or to, to, to ask for... for for, for intervention, that's possible. And Diana can help us with this. In, in case we get too many voices at the same time, uh, we also invite everyone to put their responses as well in the, uh, in the chat if they are not having the opportunity to speak or to share or even ask if necessary. Okay. So good afternoon, good morning. I don't know that it's still morning in uh, West, but good evening, Asia Pacific. And uh, thank you all for accepting our invitation. Now to start us off, I would like to give us a few things about brainstorming. What we want are as many ideas as possible from Ghana, from Ethiopia, from Egypt, from Botswana, from Mozambique, from Kenya, from Tanzania. We would like all those ideas. Do not go back with them. Ideas on the four main things that are sun. In order for us to get these ideas, there is one thing that we need to take care of. Do not judge. So if someone says that 
they would like to have a partnership with a platoon to go to the moon, that is their idea. Do not judge. Let's have as many ideas as possible. So define judgment. Let's have all the ideas first. Next. Someone, no, that cannot work. Or yes, but. Build on what they have said. If they are going to the moon, then tell us how we'll get to that moon. Something like that. So do not judge. Generate many ideas as possible. We encourage the wild ideas. Those crazy ones, like going to the moon, for instance. And then do not judge. You can only build on what someone else has said if you feel that something can, can go to that direction. But do not judge others. Now, in order for us not to judge, let's just have a second of an exercise. I would like you all to think about yourselves and your life. Can you think of an embarrassing moment in your life? I'll give you mine. I was a bedwetter until I was nine years old. Are you going to judge me? No, not really. Thank you. That's why we just so think of all your embarrassing moments. Anyone can tell us as one? Do you have any? Well, I do have many, Rose. Um, That's one. Give us one. Uh, I, I actually was doing a workshop where um, in Togo where it's basically very, very difficult to engage, uh, for example, a minister or anything like that. And I didn't know that there was a minister in, in, in the room. So when I asked the minister to play a, a game in the Aflatoon workshop, and everybody was... Uh, you know, like giving me signals, etc. like stop, stop, stop. And I just told him, he's like everybody else. He can just do that game the same way we're gonna do it. And um, not everybody liked that. And that was a very tough, tough moment and it took about a year to do some damage control with that. Exactly. So we all have those embarrassing moments. So we never judge us. You know, uh, anyone else with the embarrassed don't have time to talk about that. Just type it. We will not judge you, just as you have not judged me. Okay? So let's begin. We'll begin with the first question. HMW, you may be wondering what it is. It means how might we? How might we? People are asking, how can this program come to Ghana? How can it come to Tanzania? How can it come to Botswana? How can it come to Ethiopia? How can it come to Egypt? So the questions will be answered during this time. You have heard about the partnership model. You have heard about the Afratun social franchise model, what they are doing with NATCO in the Philippines. So if you close your eyes for one minute from your country, from your organization, where you come from, if it is Cusco in Kenya, Tanzania, how might we a partnership process based on a social franchise model to the collectives? I'm giving each of you one minute to generate three ideas and write it on the chat, or you can raise your hand to us. Beginning now. Ideas on how we might fit Afratoon's established partnership process based on our social franchise model to the cooperatives. I don't see anything on the chat yet. We have one, one, one minute. Diana, do you have any questions? Any answers? Any hands up? No, not yet. Did we understand the question? Yes. How might, how might we fit a uh, platoon's established social franchise model to the cooperatives? Uh, uh, That's the Rose, maybe to have the discussion, I can also share a little bit how NATCO, for instance, is, is doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know how NATCO is also a network of other co-ops. Uh, 
what, what what they do is that instead of having a platoon uh, partnership with each of their members, we 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 have a partnership with the national one directly. And it is NATCO basically that manages those small partnerships by themselves. They are the ones who uh, deliver capacity building. They are the ones who are in charge of of program. So. It, we, we just make sure that we focalize that partnership rather than have multiple partnerships in one country we end up only with one that is consolidated and so on so this can be one way of looking at it for instance is that there is the model of membership of cooperatives how can that be put together into one so that's one idea i think and maybe based on this example we can generate any other idea One from our art. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Let's generate the ideas. Don't keep them in your head. Botswana, how might we fit a Fratoon's established social franchise model to the cooperatives? We have someone who raised their hand. Uh, yes, please. Feel free to speak up. Hello, good, good afternoon from the Philippines. Good afternoon, thank you. Yeah, um, uh, my name is Lasalet from NATCO. I am a colleague of uh, Hazel, uh, who presented a while ago. And uh, just to support uh, what Hassan uh, shared, a while ago about the cooperative model and um, um yeah because the cooperative structure uh, actually allows that um, like natco natco is a federation of cooperatives and we have um, more than 800 member cooperatives in the country and this kind of structure is also being implemented across the world. So not only in the Philippines, but other countries as well, like in Africa or in Europe, um, have the same kind of structure. There are cooperative federations who have membership across the region. So what NATO has done in the Philippines is very much applicable to the other regions as well in Asia and even in Africa or in um, Europe. So I believe that uh, that is something that is doable. Thank you. Thank you from the Philippines. You have found that it's possible? It's doable and it can be done. Let's go to the next question. Our time is over for the first question. I think we have a great answer there. How might we be active partners within the Afratu network? How might we be active partners within the Afratu network? I said you can either raise your hand and Diana will let me know, then you can speak or you can ch chat, write on the chat. How can we be active? Now, remember, we are doing this from the perspective of our countries, the perspective of our organizations. If you are an apex organization, if you are savings and credit, if you are an agricultural organization, if you are cooperative. So you are looking at it from your perspective. That's why we like to generate as many ideas as possible. Selecting ambassadors in different countries, great, wonderful. Right, right, or oh, raise your hand. How might we be active partners? I said I have one minute. How might we be active partners within the Afratun network? You as a cooperative, not you as Linda. We are looking at you as a cooperative. Not you as Peter. We are looking at you as a cooperative because you are their representative right now. How might we be active partners within the Afratun network? So how might cooperatives be active partners within the Afratu network? Type your ideas or raise your hand. 
Great, thank you, Connie. The rest are not typing. We have a raised hand from Musa. Yes, Musa. That's a Swatini, right? Musa Stibanze, is it? Yeah. Okay. We'll speak. Musa, go ahead. I cannot hear him. Can you, Diana? No. Okay, just you're, type you're your answer. Muted, but... Yeah, we can hear you. Maybe just write down your ideas on the chat. We also just have a raised here. hand from Kiryanki. Yes, Kiryanki, that's Cooperative University of Kenya. Ask your question. Yes, uh, your good, idea. Afternoon. good afternoon. Good to afternoon. You. Good afternoon. Yes, sorry, what is the question? How might we be active partners within the Aflatu network? Uh, the Cooperative University of Kenya works with the partner organizations, mm -hmm. uh, which are individual cooperative organizations and uh, national government and county government. We also have partnership with the schools, both the primary and the secondary schools. And um, we believe that mm -hmm. uh, partnership with you would really enhance our, our work with our partners. Thank you. So because of your structure and the partnerships in place, you believe you can be active partners. Great. Anyone yeah. else? Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Awach. Thank you, Dan, again. Write as many ideas as possible, please. The more, the merrier. And there's no correct or wrong idea. I said we generate as many as possible, including going to the moon. Um, Rose, maybe, maybe just to clarify, because I think I saw a very interesting question, which asks basically, uh, what is the difference between the Aflatoon uh, social franchise and the program? Um, uh, the program is basically what will be implemented, what will be uh, provided to, to, to the beneficiaries. The, the Aflatoon franchise model is, is more about the collaboration between the organizations and Aflatoon. It, has, it, it starts on something that reaches out to the beneficiaries. So it's more like... Um, if you want to implement the Aflatoon program, you need to be part of the Aflatoon network, for instance. Uh, you need to receive a training. You need to be a member. You need to be an active member and so on. Uh, so that is the social franchise. And again, uh, we, we call it the social franchise. Uh, it's because it is a social franchise in the way that uh, we have the program that is generic. You become a partner. That program becomes yours, basically. Uh, when you adapt it, when you uh, contextualize it based on, on guidance from us as well and so on, that program becomes yours and then you implement it and you implement the Aflatoon program and it's your Aflatoon program. You are part again of the network, we will learn from you and so on. So there is the model, there is the franchise model that basically manages uh, what happens between the organizations. Just to clarify. Thank you, Hassan, for that. Uh, I, we have a hand raised by Sherif from Egypt. Yes, please, Sherif. Uh, thinking about what has been said so far, um, it's, very, um, it's very useful to, uh, to have things uh, structured based on, um, on, on demographics. So for example, uh, in some of our countries here in North Africa and uh, going down further south, um, have uh, a, big, a big difference between those who are living in the urban cities and those who are living in the countryside and those who are living further down in the um, um, remote areas as in Sahara and uh, uh, Bedouin life, uh, lifestyles. So um, I, I'm thinking as we go along uh, how, the, how we can um, uh, take uh, programs based on uh, these different demographics, uh, and then uh, combine them all. Combine them all on macro level, uh, 
so that we can have one national program for all of them. Uh, that's one. That's my. That's my first thought that came to me, and this is how this is going to be very useful for us in our countries. The second thing is um, going further down this uh, through this presentation uh, to uh, understand how can on the macro level we can uh, partnership with uh, uh, Aflatoon and the program uh, uh, explained today, and then from the macro level we can uh, distribute. Uh, uh, down the line to the different demographics based on their geographical areas. Thank you very much, uh, Sheriff, for that uh, very insightful idea. I think, Asan, you had that. So we now move to the next question. Yeah, I think there are no more other ideas on that one. How might we support the advocacy for social and financial education in our countries? How might we support the advocacy and social and for social and financial education in our countries? You have heard about the NATCO experience with the Minister Department of Education. I think that was put like um, lobbying and advocating for the social and financial education in the schools. What about your countries? How might you support or how might we support the advocacy for social and financial education in our countries? Any ideas on that? Linda already talked of a name with the Flatoon Ministry of Education, Department of Cooperatives, Embedded Cooperative Education in Schools. Thank you, Linda. Anyone else? Botswana? I think you had a comment about why that Afratun youth is needed in Botswana for youth development. In Eswatini, they can do that by becoming focal point people for the program. Botswana, I'm keen on your idea on this one. I watch serve as a channel through our social media to active advocate for the issue. Thank you. GCC, Ghana Cooperative Council as the apex. They can help in advocacy and also partner with the Ministry of Education, Department of Cooperatives and also societies to make it easy. In Botswana, they can be part of the apex body. Ah, with the Swatini and Resodo. That's interesting. So it's a big collaboration, Botswana, Resodo, and Eswatini. Then partnership with other institutions, government, schools, and universities. That's from Eira. How is Indonesia, Eira? There's also an idea about partnership with uh, governments and uh, universities, great. Thank you, I think we are done with our time for that one. Then finally, how might we learn? share and collaborate with their Fratu network partners. Type your ideas, how we can learn, share and collaborate. Diana, any hands up? No, not, not yet. Okay. We have a hand up from Musa and Nana. Musa, are you able to talk this time? I hope it will allow me this time. Okay, we can hear your voice now. Thank you. Yes, yes. Um, I, I think um, the the pro. I think we lost you again. We are losing you. Just type it. Then we have Nana. Hello. Yeah, please, can you hear me? Yes. 
yeah, thanks very much. Yes, I can hear you, Nana. Thank you. Uh, looking about how best we can learn, share, and collaborate with the Avatar Network partners, I believe we first need to understand their concept well and how best we can fuse it into our organizational structures in order to make it a success. So for us, we believe that first mm -hmm. we have to get probably maybe on a roundtable discussion, get to understand the philosophy, the concept, and how best our members would understand the concept. Then that is when the learning comes in. And also how best we can also uh, introduce it to them whereby they can understand it. Then from there, we can share it through our media platforms. Also, <coughs> also using the social media handlings as a tool and also inviting, uh, with this things, Ghana per se, we need to get these politicians or the top players on board. As for example, mm -hmm. the Ministry of Education to understand the reason why this thing has to be, uh, why we have to involve uh, the students into it, probably between the age of from six to probably 22 or 20, why they need. And from the Bank of Ghana is also working in hand to achieve something of that sort, financial literacy. So we can also approach them, also bring them into, the, uh, bring them together to, then from there we can also collaborate and see how best our impact can be felt. Because we have to also find a way to even introduce the cooperative concept in curriculums, where that whereby it will help us make an ease impact on uh, 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 or probably to achieve the goal on the or the vision of Faton Network. So for me, okay. I think this is Thank what you, I have Albert. I, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much about that and the possibilities of learning, sharing and collaborating. Yes, Asan. My time is up. Can Aflatoon also uh, provide an answer on learning and sharing? Yes, please. Um, uh, one of the ideas that we had when we approached ICA, uh, Asia, Pacific, and Africa is also to look at the platforms that they have themselves. I mean, you, you have a network of cooperatives, you have a network, we have members, and you have established fora, uh, a, a national forum for education, a national forum for this and that, for instance. And uh, Aflatoon is actually interested in making use of, of those platforms to pass on the message of the importance of social and financial education. Not only pass on the message, but also implement through those, uh, through those uh, kind of platforms and structures that are in place. Thank you, Hassan. I think our ideas, I don't see any more ideas running, unless Diana, you have You have a, a hand uh, raised from Abir. Yes, please go ahead. Hello, Dr. Rose and everyone. Hello, Abir. I'm Abir from Palestine. I'm nice to see you again, Dr. Rose. <laughs> nice to see you too. Thank you. Yeah, uh, regarding uh, how we can share and collaborate with Aflatoon Network, you know, in Palestine, we really don't have uh, any financial or educational services about financial issues in our schools, uh, neither in the universities, uh, almost. I think we need uh, to be to get introduced by NETCO to uh, Aflatoon partners that are more relevant to each country. And uh, I asked Hassan for, for this, and he promised uh, me to, to, to be connected to focal point uh, uh, for Palestine so we can uh, uh, expose to Arab countries' experience regarding the uh, Aflatoon program. So we can be engaged in it, uh, and maybe we can receive training so we can implement uh, such a wonderful program in Palestine. And thank you. Thank you so much. And our regards to the pair of <coughs> cooperatives in Pakistan. I think, Hassan, you had that request. And I think, as Hassan said, that uh, after this, uh, each of you will be linked to the regional, Afratun regional coordinators or program managers so that this conversation can continue. It's not ending here today. We are only thinking about various ways of doing it. So as we generate as many ideas as possible, then we are able to know what direction they will take thereafter. And we hope and our vision is to scale. We understood that Africa wants to impact and scale the impact. And I believe the cooperatives is the best model, the best model to scale this up. So our partnership session is over. Asan, I don't know whether Mohit is going to 
do the summary for this or we shall pick that data ourselves? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Rosa. I was also taking notes and uh, also we're keeping records of the chat okay. as well as the discussion, but uh, we, we're, uh, I'm taking notes myself and I think Mohit is also okay. leading that. Then so I think we can move on to the next yeah. uh, project. Right. Thank you, Rose. That was not embarrassing. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Thank you so much, Rose. Uh, that was, in fact, uh, an excellent session where uh, we really got uh, some great insights and great inputs from um, you know, uh, all the participants here, all members from the ICA uh, countries we have. Uh, so yeah, being mindful about the time, I would now request maybe uh, we, we take this momentum ahead and we really ensure that uh, from the energy that uh, we now have from the previous session on partnerships, we look at some of the aspects around what are the ongoing projects that uh, the ICA members in Africa and Asian countries uh, currently have, which are to do with social and financial education. Uh, we will, of course, uh, uh, not be very specific and really go, you know, uh, one question at a time, but I would rather invite, uh, you know, our friends, uh, colleagues from all the countries to uh, just raise your hand and, uh, you know, take this opportunity to, to pitch in, share a bit about uh, yourself, your organization, and also the work that you do around this topic. And uh, how do you see, based on the discussions we have already had, uh, more about Aflatoon and the various programs and uh, initiatives they have, and also with NADCO. Uh, so to please feel free and uh, let us know what are the training approaches you see are very relevant to your kind of work, and how do you see this supporting some existing projects. Uh, I will take this opportunity for, I had a couple of uh, personal chats right now. Um, one uh, coming from uh, Ms. Manori from uh, Sanasa Federation in Sri Lanka. And uh, they have a few examples to cite about the work they do with youth and uh, on education and financial uh, uh, you know, literacy. Uh, so Ms. Manori, if you can hear me, uh, you may just unmute your mic and share a bit more on how do you feel the, the work can be complemented. Uh, you will need to unmute your mic, uh, Ms. Manori. Okay, I see uh, probably there's some issue with the uh, microphone. Uh, in that case, uh, is there anyone else who would like to pitch in and share a bit about their organization and the work they do in this arena? Connie has uh, raised her hand. Sure, please, uh, please go ahead. I'm called Connie and I work with Health Partners Uganda. And we are implementing a project called Cooperative Connect Girls Centers. Um, our, main, our main project is about um, co cooperative health insurance where our members pull resources to be able to access quality and affordable care. And we have this branch of a project called Connect Girls Centers. And in this, we do have uh, young people aged 10 to 24. We are mainly focusing on girls. But we do hope that probably we'll be able to include boys in the long run. And uh, this is one of the ways uh, the project is focused on empowering the youth as well as uh, promoting a sustainability channel for the cooperative health insurance scheme. Um, I looked at the approaches as happy to learn that, I, uh, that we can be able to, uh, to implement using the AFLA teen and the AFLA youth. Most of our girls that we work with actually are not very, they, they have not attained the, the literacy. Most of them dropped out of school. Some of them are young mothers. So I think that we are able to um, adopt the Afla teen and Af Afla youth. And uh, currently we started training them in, you, through our partners. Uh, for us, we only do capacity building. So the cooperatives are able to manage, to obtain and manage partnerships on their own. It is these partners that help them to train these young people. So uh, for some of the girls centers, they were able to secure themselves uh, partners to train their girls in uh, voluntary uh, village savings and loan associations. 
And I am looking at this uh, social and financial education, is, it's going to be very, very influential uh, as, as, as far as uh, them being able to start up saving schemes and being able to plan and attain um, financial uh, education in the long run. So um, I'm happy to be part of this and um, I'm glad to learn that we'll be connected to our Flatoon coordinators who will be able to guide us more such that we're able to look at different approaches we can use and we contextualize them to the, uh, to the particular group of girls that we serve and in the particular areas where they are. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Connie. That was really uh, very much uh, giving us a good insight on uh, the work that you do in Uganda. Uh, maybe uh, I'll invite uh, Mr. Suresh Thapaji from uh, Nepal, if you would like to intervene here uh, based on the work that you already do with SDGs in general and uh, SDG on education in particular, Mr. Thapa. Yes, thank you, Moit. Thank you very much. Uh, me, Suresh Thapa from National Cooperative Federation of Nepal. Uh, actually, uh, these days, National Cooperative Federation of Nepal is not actually running uh, the specific project uh, which is related to uh, youth uh, and uh, the education. However, uh, currently we are running one uh, project uh, as named as it uh, capacity development of cooperatives uh, to our uh, uh, member organization. And we have a program of uh, uh, youth entrepreneurship development, uh, actually who are uh, running uh, their courses in uh, campus. And uh, uh, because of this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we have uh, slightly changed uh, the activities of uh, uh, the project and uh, mm, uh, we are trying to adjust them in uh, riverbed farming which is the west land of uh, Nepal. There are lots of west land in Nepal and uh, we are engaging them in riverbed farming uh, through the cooperative entrepreneurship uh, and uh, we are uh, uh, inputting uh, them the agro, uh, agro I, I actually agro inputs. So uh, this uh, project uh, uh, one of the part, one one uh, one of the part of the project is to uh, uh, giving them the education, uh, financial education, which is uh, very important uh, in terms of Nepal. Financial cooperatives uh, are uh, in good uh, good uh, run; they are running very good. That's why uh, we are trying to give them the how to change their behavior from the very beginning. Uh, there, uh, in terms of the financial discipline. So, uh, if they are disciplined in the financial activities, then they uh, could uh, change their life and they could uh, enhance their uh, financial capacity, uh, which is also related to the social development and social cohesion. Uh, so, uh, apart from this riverbed farming, we are, uh, 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 we are uh, uh, together, together we are uh, giving them uh, such trainings. And uh, as Mohit said that uh, in terms of the intervention in uh, sustainable development goal, uh, we have planned this year uh, some of the major activities which is related to the uh, uh, primary education. And uh, uh, we have a program to establish a child care center or uh, the pre-primary schools uh, to encourage the cooperative members uh, because uh, in the context of Nepal, the, 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 the concept of this pre-primary education is quite uh, uh, not so much uh, old. That's why we are trying to uh, upgrade such uh, primary education systems through cooperatives. However, there are some constraints that we will talk in the later part maybe. Uh, it's, a, it's a part of the policy, advocacy, uh, there are so uh, things. And uh, Mohit, um, uh, on these specific questions, so I'd like to conclude my, uh, you know, some of my uh, thoughts. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Tapa. That's indeed uh, always useful to see how you are able to connect uh, the programs on policy level and especially with the SDGs. Uh, and some of the work that you're doing is also very relevant. Uh, 
I invite, uh, yes, please feel free anyone else who would like to share a bit about their work and uh, if there are specific areas under the Aflatoon training approach which you think we can support uh, in your existing projects. Yeah, I see friends from Indonesia uh, trying to make uh, uh, Elham or uh, Hira, are you here? Yes, Hira has her uh, hand raised. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It's nice to meet you again, uh, Rose and Javier. How are you? Uh, okay, I just want to a bit share my experience about uh, a financial, uh, we call it financial literacy for the children and for the youth, um, a part of the Aflatoon project. <laughs> Yeah, and um, I was involving in the uh, the project like a financial literacy for the youth for the uh, secondary school uh, from UNICEF, uh, but there there is nothing uh, improved after that. So just doing like a, a TOT a TOT um, for the facilitators and the teachers. But after that, there is non implementation, and then how the the uh, program just work or uh, implemented in another uh, area. Uh, it's only in the West Java uh, where I'm I'm living now. And then the, uh, when I saw the the video about Aflatoon, and then I met uh, Mr. Lucky last year, and we talk a lot about what Aflatoon is. It's really interested to um, apply in our uh, uh, what our student uh, especially for me I'm, I'm, I'm teaching uh, the young people like 18 to 20 uh, uh, four years old uh, in the university and it's really needs to uh, improve their ability uh, how they manage their own financial and then they will do it in the uh, because in my my university is based on the business school so it's really important for them to uh up, to scale up their um uh, ability and they still scale up their business as well and um what i'm thinking about the how we uh, how might we be involved in the project uh, by the Appleton? Um, I suggested that uh, it started with the with the uh, school, and then I heard that Indonesia has already um, has uh, had uh, MOU or with the primary schools, but uh, so far I haven't heard. Uh, how it goes with with the with the uh, primary schools, um, but maybe we can start with the um, uh, secondary schools and then universities uh, to our youth. And um, in my my um, what is it? in my my son's uh, schools, they have the, the small program with how they manage their. Uh, pocket money. Uh, it's really good for them to 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 now to introduce what is the uh, pocket money is for. So not for going to just buy things that want they want, but maybe buy things they need. It, it is the the best uh, idea. And then I want to to answer the the last question and what type of project. I'm really interested about the circular economy. Uh, for the youth, maybe for the circular economy, uh, the, I mean the Aflatoon project, the circular economy by Aflatoon project, I think it's much more, um, in, uh, what is it? Um, I think it is really good if uh, we, we, we combine this, this, uh, this idea, uh, so not the Aflatoon will, will, co will, Cooperate, or will will in, in involved with the with the circular economy uh, project, which is I uh, introduced to my student in university. Uh, maybe that's for me. Thank you, everyone. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Hira. As always, uh, the topics that you've raised around circular economy and uh, other work that is already been done in Indonesia is indeed very insightful. And uh, we'll make sure it's been recorded and we can pick this up again in the next sessions when we have a bilateral engagement between friends in Indonesia and the Aplatoon partners there. Uh, maybe for this session, we have one, uh, you know, maybe some last time for uh, uh, anyone else uh, who would like to share. I see a message from Mr. Dang. Uh, Mr. Anurag, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Hi, Mohit. Hi. Hi. Yeah, please go ahead and maybe use these as a guiding questions to see how NCUI, your organization, is also working in this direction. Sure, sure. Uh, good morning, good afternoon to everybody. I'm Anurag. I'm from National Cooperative Union of India. It's the apex organization for promoting cooperative education in India. And we are promoting cooperative movement in India by providing various uh, cooperative education and training programs. In India, the cooperative sector falls under Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare under Department of Cooperation. And NCY as an apex organization is responsible for conducting so many uh, cooperative education and training programs. Apart from it, it also has its project offices in various, various states. There are around 44, 45 cooperative education uh, projects going on all over the country. Apart from it, uh, around 250 member, we have around 250 member organizations, which are multi-state cooperative societies of the country. And most of the cooperative societies are engaged in primary sector, that is agriculture, animal husbandry, poultry, fisheries, farming. And we are also exploring new areas like integrated farming. And uh, we're conducting research also, uh, that is how much is the cooperative sector contributing to the national GDP. So th these are the various activities that NCUI is engaged in. And also I NCUI is a member organization of ICAAP, International Cooperative Alliance. And uh, NCUI would also, you know, would also be uh, more than happy to partner with Aflatoon to conduct its programs, maybe. And uh, 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 that's all. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. It's uh, useful to know what kind of domains you already operate in. And uh, I'm sure with partners uh, in India, Aflatoon would also be happy to associate on some of the work that you do in uh, integrated farming and animal husbandry and dairy sectors, as you just mentioned. Uh, I guess we're already really learning out of time. So for the project section per se, uh, apart from the discussions we've already had and the uh, notes we have taken and the chat uh, sections we have, I guess we are through with this section and we should probably quickly move on to the next. Again, thank you for your time and uh, we'll of course be around for answering any questions you might have. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Mohit. Um, uh, the, the, the next uh, discussion, and we, we will try to, because I think that from the first two ones, we also touched a little bit on the program development, uh, especially with the late, with the late uh, intervention, with the last one. Uh, you, you talked a lot about the, uh, the co-op education and so on. I think there is a lot that we want to do in that space, and, and I'm very happy that that was touched upon. It's nice to look at it as a project, but I also believe it's nice to look at it as a program. Uh, so it can be in multiple projects. Uh, the same as we do social financial education, we can talk about cooperative social and financial education, and that can become a program uh, that can be embedded in different projects, can be embedded in different strategies and so on. So um, uh, I would like to invite you as well all, uh, please raise your hand if you want to intervene to, to respond a little bit and to think with us on uh, how can how how might we as as cooperatives work with Aflatoon to develop new programs in country, region, global, uh, to develop new concepts and approaches on social and financial? I mean, you, I, I talked about the five core elements, but are there other areas that we need to consider? Uh, considering the cooperatives principle for principles, for example, there are seven of them, I believe. Um, uh, how might we? advocate uh, in, 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 in the cooperatives model itself? How can we advocate for this concept in the cooperative model? How can we bring this cooperatives model to children level? Uh, and, and here I'm thinking that you, you all have the, um, uh, 
the, 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 uh, the structures of the cooperatives, for example, and this is an idea that we're having at Upper School. You all have these structures of the cooperatives built with individuals and so on and so on. But you're getting closer to the children by the school cooperatives, for example. But with Aflatoon, we're looking at further, pushing, pushing the bar a bit further to reach to the children and, and, and give the children the skills and the capacity to manage their own cooperatives by themselves, basically, and build their cooperatives by themselves, build based on the principles that you have, but at the same time, use the social and financial education to build their skills and to reinforce those models. So uh, I invite you to please raise your hand or, or, or write down uh, some of the idea that you see in the program development. Uh, please, uh, Suresh, you can please intervene. Uh, Suresh, yes. I think you have, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, thank you very much. Uh, so, so as far, we already discussed on how we can develop projects and what uh, we have done uh, from our experience. Uh, as part of this program development, uh, it's, it's really, in, in uh, the context of Nepal, it's really new for us. That's why, however, we have, uh, we can do uh, lots of things to develop this uh, program uh, as a part of the SDG implementation. Uh, National Cooperative Federation of Nepal has already developed uh, uh, SDG implementation guidelines uh, for different level cooperatives uh, from apex level to primary cooperatives. So uh, as uh, we are talking about how we can intervene uh, in terms of this uh, uh, children and the youth, especially. Uh, in my thought, uh, uh, so the very entry point is the pre-primary level education, uh, which is most important uh, for the cooperative philosophy that uh, we can teach uh, our uh, uh, children. So uh, that is the point that we can develop this cooperative model the concept of the cooperation, the concept of the collaboration, the concept of uh, altruism and sharing. So uh, uh, that is the entry point of uh, the development of the cooperative philosophy. And uh, so uh, this program could be one uh, uh, model, a cooperative model program uh, to intervene in the pre-primary uh, level education. Uh, after that, uh, uh, in school education, it's very important uh, uh, that that part is actually for the awareness uh, and cooperative uh, education. Uh, that is very important. And uh, the concept of the financial inclusion, the concept of the financial uh, literacy, uh, that is the, uh, uh, that is, uh, that's why the cooperative awareness and uh, financial literacy in mass level, uh, uh, number of schools and number of students, uh, could be the conceptual idea for the cooperative philosophy and uh, uh, another part is uh, uh, we'll, uh, we always talk about this leadership development so uh, this is also the entry point of the leadership development of uh, uh, the students uh, for the future cooperators so uh, these are two area that we can intervene uh, and uh, uh, in the basis of uh, this stg implementation guidelines we have developed some uh, primary level and uh, secondary level programs uh, that is uh, uh, financial literacy and uh, numeracy programs for e schools uh, uh, which is also and, and uh, uh, definitely this uh, subsidized loan part is another uh, uh, aspect of uh, the education that we can develop uh, so for this uh, in order to uh, develop all these uh, program aspects uh, the most important part is the youth disaggregated data uh, that uh, we are lacking uh, in one side. Uh, research part is another part. So the advocacy uh, to give them the tangible uh, programs such as uh, uh, how to live in the society uh, and uh, uh, how we can uh, uh, improve their livelihood. Uh, uh, that, that is uh, the, the another part that we can develop and we can uh, give them the uh, education. So that could be uh, the sum of the part that 
we can integrate them in the social and the financial uh, uh, educations uh, through cooperative models. And uh, yes, these are some of my raw concepts. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very, thank you very much, Suresh. That that was very, very clear indeed, and uh, I think it's pretty much covered everything. Huh? Um, uh, Hera, please. Okay. Uh, Hera, I think you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, um, I have an, an a bit the uh, idea for this uh, the poll might we bring cooperative model to the children. Um, I developed some um, uh, like um, school um, student cooperative in the, um, in the senior high school. Uh, so it's uh, about 15 to 17 or 15 to 14 to 18. Uh, through the, this model, they, they lead their own co-op in schools and then the, the teacher they have um, a role as a facilitator uh, but this this program this program is not uh, it's hard to it's hard to continue when they when they graduate so i think it will be good if there is some um, uh, after they graduate they continue the project i mean they continue the um they from their own co-op uh because after after graduate they they allow to to form the co-op it's like we we have a regulation like 18 years old uh they can form uh, they can register to a co-op or to form a co-op it's like they they indicate as adults so uh, adult uh, uh below 18 there's the that's that's still uh teenagers are they uh they still kids or uh, they don't allow to be a member of cooperative. So the, through the school co-op, maybe this is one of the approach we can do to uh, make the program, make, make the Alphaton uh, program will uh, continue until they finish or, and then uh, they form their own co-op. So it will be established and sustained for themselves and then they can um, form their own business. This is my uh, two cents. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Hera. Um, I see, um, no, there is no hand re raised over there. But I, I think this is, this is very good, but I think, I think we can look into the expertise exchange. And here I would like to uh, c clarify a little bit for the expertise exchange, where uh, as we have an MOU with uh, ICA Africa, ICA Asia Pacific, uh, one of the areas we looked at is basically how to benefit from each other's expertise. Uh, Aflatoon does a lot of program development, does a lot of training, does a lot of advocacy, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, and of course, we don't do that ourselves. Uh, we always do it uh, by bringing in uh, experts from outside, by um, consulting with our network, by consulting with uh, the expertise within the network, and by forming advisory groups and uh, uh, the, the, that, that can work on different areas. So we are looking indeed at bringing in ICA to, to, to support this, and vice versa. We are also expecting that if ICA is developing certain programs or approaches that are close to the social and financial education, they should also rely on a platoon expertise to, to contribute to that. So the idea here is how do you think we should, how might we um, mutually support ongoing activities and so on? How can we select expert in topics to support each other? Highlight expertise, share findings, for example, and so on. Uh, how can we provide rich data, context information? I mean, we both have large networks. And I do believe there is a lot of data in there. I do believe there is a lot of learning in there. How can we learn from our both um, uh, networks in order to make informed decision, in order to develop uh, programs based on evidence and informed uh, and, 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 uh, and evidence, sorry. Yeah. So please, if you, if you have other ideas on this and how to do this, uh, please intervene. Uh, Rose and Mohit, you can also, uh, take part in this one because I think one of the ideas we talked about is that 
we look at it first from a global, global perspective and then we go to the country uh, members. May I? Again? Hello? Uh, yes, Hira, please, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, what am I, uh, my like uh, changing expert uh, from, from one to another? And then maybe we have a, a webinar like this and um, maybe we just one topic discuss every, every uh, um, monthly, uh, if we, weekly is too, 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 too often, maybe monthly we have a discussion discuss with uh, with any other expert in around the world and uh, do some research and then we do a, a workshop like this uh, based on the research every uh, I don't know in every country or every every section uh, sector um, yeah maybe that's it they can like uh, do doing the, the the changing expert or, or maybe internship to any other um, institution where the Aflatun uh, project is implemented. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Um, Hassan, uh, would you? Oh, we have a hand raised from Rose. Uh, thank you, Diana. I'm also thinking, I don't know whether this um, falls into the area of expertise or exchanges, but I'm thinking also mentorship and coaching expertise, perhaps for those with various projects, like um, for these youth in the Afratun program or even the youth in. Uh, various cooperative programs. I think I saw something about uh, Boreswa. I know we have the Africa, or including Asia Pacific, we have the ICA Youth Network. So there are various uh, trainings and uh, maybe forums or workshops that are held either annually or at various times that we could uh, have these exchanges. So perhaps we could have an expertise on financial literacy or entrepreneurship or cooperative education, for instance, in a forum for Afratun partners. And we, I, I, this is how I'm looking at it. So when it comes to the exchanges, it can, it can either go, it can go either way, because I believe also the cooperatives have a lot to offer in terms of the expertise they have in, either in mentorship and also in coaching. And the other aspect I would have um, seen viable and feasible is uh, if I've not forgotten. I'll think about it, but it was, I'll, I'll, I'll write it on the chat. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Rose. Um, uh, Mohit, if, if, if you want to add something on this as well, please. Because I, I'm, I'm also curious about, because we spoke about it earlier uh, in the preparation of this webinar will be good to also reiterate it and hear for, for, for the others. Uh, no, for sure. Indeed, Hassan. And, and thanks you, uh, Rose, as well. Uh, we have been doing some of these uh, uh, sessions of late. Uh, there, is a, there is a committee which is in place in the Asia Pacific region, uh, both for uh, youth cooperation and also for um, uh, what we call cooperatives uh, in educational institutions, uh, which is what I guess Hira also touched upon while she was talking about the need to have campus cooperatives and university cooperatives uh, uh, yeah, uh, to make sure that uh, young people are already uh, made aware of the cooperative business enterprise and see how they can uh, learn by doing and uh, managing cooperatives themselves. Uh, so we do have uh, such a network to tap into uh, and uh, we will be really happy to uh, share from our members uh, who in Japan, in Malaysia, have been really leading some of these in initiatives on um, school cooperatives and campus cooperatives and university cooperatives and how uh, their learning can really uh, assist uh, to our members across 
of course, uh, the region itself and uh, Africa and other regions as well. In fact, we recently, uh, as, as uh, recent as October 2019, we also had a session uh, together again with the colleagues from uh, Africa office uh, on cooperatives in education institutions and really trying to, uh, you know, de-jargonize the whole aspect of uh, what are these kind of cooperatives and how can they be uh, instruments of learning and for especially financial and social education for cooperatives. So I'll be happy to, of course, uh, facilitate this discussion through the yeah. brief as well. Thank you, Mohit. And I, and I think this also goes back to one of the ideas suggested in the beginning in partnership is that uh, the, the cooperatives can also build those side of partnerships with universities, schools, network of schools, and so on. And uh, it's again uh, using their expertise in working with those schools, but also building those partnerships so that they can implement that social and financial education. Indeed, indeed. Thank you very much, uh, Mohit. Um, uh, just for consideration, we are almost actually we are a little bit over time. Uh, we would like as well to uh, thank everyone basically for for for, for their for, for their interventions, for thinking with us and brainstorming with us uh, around the different questions and the different topics we addressed. Uh, uh, of course, two hours is not enough. It's not. It's never enough to introduce the full Africa program and to see through it. Uh, but we will make sure to make follow-ups, we will make sure to, to make contact. But before we close, uh, I would like to introduce our CEO, uh, Roland Monash. Uh, he would like to, to just to say a few words for us to, 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 to close this meeting and also uh, be with us, of course. Okay, thank you, Hassan. Uh, am I, uh, can you hear me? Can you see me? Yes, we can. Loud, loud and clear, yes. Okay, my colleague friends, uh, good afternoon. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't be there from the beginning, but I have been listening in uh, for quite a while now, and I must say it's been a very rich and interesting discussion. Um, a few reflections from my side, if you allow me, um, and also within the context of COVID-19, I guess, because we can't ignore that. Uh, the, the past eight months have been a very difficult period for, for anyone. And I think we all realize that it has not only been an, an health shock or a shock for the education system, but overall an enormous, huge economic shock. And, and even in places like Switzerland or the US, large shares of population were completely uh, unprepared, were not resilient enough, and governments had to come up with large uh, cash transfer, social safety nets to help these people. So if there's one thing, and you have seen it in your countries as well, is that the we were not resilient uh, and we were not able to deal with these types of shocks. So if there is one thing which for us in a platoon is, is, a, is a recognition again, something which we knew but is, is reaffirmed is that we really need to build an, a next generation of resilient children and young people. And for that, it's so important to provide these children with uh, life skills, financial and entrepreneurship uh, skills. Uh, maybe COVID was an extreme shock, but. Uh, so many times in, in life, uh, we, we, we see those uh, moments that we need to have uh, a resilient, uh, resiliency to, to deal with it. Um, looking at the, the latest evidence, what we are seeing is that uh, just the OECD came up with a, a, a study uh, looking at uh, how, how financially uh, knowledgeable and aware are, are 15 year olds in school. And even in a uh, in number of countries in your regions participated. And we basically, the finding was that many, if not the majority of children do not know, know the simple basics about finances. In Indonesia, for example, over 60% of 15 year olds didn't know the most simple basics uh, on finances. So the whole world is at the moment talking about building back better, building back more resilient. If there is one contribution we can make is to make sure that the uh, children and young people uh, financial, social, and entrepreneurship education. Um, we think that the, at Aplatoon, we really see the cooperatives as an absolute uh, forefront player, a key player in, in, in this process. Uh, you have played a magnificent role and you can continue to play and even expand on that specifically on focusing on children and young people. Um, of course, and that example has been discussed today in, in the workshop is uh, for us, an, an excellent example is um, the NATCO in the Philippines, the way how they have responded to COVID to help the education system, 
the way how they are continuing to support uh, at school level, at community level, at district level, but even at national level, uh, the authorities to make sure that children continue to access education and get those important life skills and financial skills has been remarkable. Um, today, a, a number of important ideas uh, were mentioned. And uh, I won't go and, and list them in detail, but I do think that, uh, again, I do want to highlight in, in the action points you have identified the recognition that working with schools, with universities, uh, co-ops can play an enormous important role at, at country level, uh, working with the ministries of education uh, to work in innovative, creative and sustainable ways to empower children at, at scale with these essential skills. Um, we really think that, that your co-op platforms are, 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 are an, ess an essential and a unique opportunity and as Aflatu we are with you uh, to build on this and, and we're looking forward to work with you on that. Um, what we specifically also like with working with the cooperatives is the link between financial education as well as financial inclusion. And specifically for uh, the whole idea about savings, entrepreneurship, you cannot only give them the capacity, but you also can give them the access to, uh, to the necessary resources. Specifically on youth, they are basically the, uh, have been for a long time the forgotten generation. At the moment, everybody is talking about youth, but nobody has real solutions. And actually, uh, cooperatives, Aflatoon, working together to develop programs for youth is, is an, uh, probably the most tangible example which is out there in the world to support uh, uh, this generation. Um, let me stop here. I really look forward to, to further strengthen and build on the, this very rich discussion. Uh, the ICANN network and, and Aflatoon together can do fantastic things. Thank you so much. Thank you, Roland. Yes, Diana, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Mohit uh, shared an idea. What if everyone switch on their cameras for a last picture and um, to close the session? Yeah, that'll be great. I mean, uh, as we all uh, bid adieu and of course then meet in other forums. A uh, few of us, if you can switch on the cameras, uh, we have uh, a few already, uh, but it'll be good to have at least one screenshot with everyone on there. Nice to see you, Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Yeah. So I'm just waiting for a couple others to switch it on and then uh, we'll take a few screenshots. And uh, smiley faces, always uh, great to have. <laughs> okay, this is good. All right, uh, and one more. Perfect, perfect. One last bit. I see a few more who have just joined again, <laughs> just for the camera, is it? Okay, perfect. All right. Thank you, uh, Pahit. Thank you, thank you so much, Diana. It was a lovely meeting and uh, we really hope to take forward the outcomes of this discussion. Thank you so much. Definitely. Have a nice day, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.